The phrase peace in the Middle East has been a sick joke ever since I was a kid in the 1980s. The war in Iraq and the wars of the Middle East have been raging for over 30 years. Now, look further back, the wars between the Sunni and Shia and the wars between many of those tribes have been raging since long before America even existed. I don't get excited when I see the government or Obama talking about airstrikes because I know that that's something that we've been doing for God knows how long we've been doing it. The simple fact of the matter is, when America deposed Saddam Hussein and took those Sunnis out of power who were in Iraq and put the Shia in power so that we could control the government, the simple fact of the matter is, those Sunnis did not have equal access to the resources and they are determined at this point that they are going to fight the Shia to the death. Part of ISIS's main statement is that they will kill every last Shia, American, Israeli, whatever they can get their hands on. We need to adopt a policy of containment. We need to pull our people out, let the Shia and the Sunni fight it out. It's their civil war. We can't get involved with it because the more we get involved, the more of our people are gonna die. That being said, I'm very happy that sites like Beskor and Ogrish actually exist because you can actually see the unedited footage of most of these propaganda videos that are being released. It's a shame that we still have Americans over there being beheaded by these animals, but the problem is they're over there. America has almost nothing to fear from these people. They have no air force, they have no navy, and with good police work here at home, and good international policing and good intelligence, we'd be able to interdict these people. We'd be able to interdict. That means that we'd work far behind enemy lines with proper policing and intelligence. But ultimately, these people number so many in the billions that they reproduce fast enough so that no matter how many of them you kill, it really doesn't matter because there'll always be more coming of age to fight. We need to adopt a policy of containment. Bombing them with airplanes and drones is not working. The simple fact of the matter is the war isn't working. And in 30 years, more than 30 years, they've been in war forever. We took far less time defeating the Nazis than we've been fighting these people. And what have we really gotten for it besides amputeed soldiers, dead soldiers, displaced families, families with no breadwinners because they're, you know, dead, they were military. What have we really gotten out of it? I really think America needs to reevaluate their policy. What also interests me is the things that are not being said. Iran and Syria, we were about to go to war with Iran and Syria within the last five years. Or actually, we wanted to go to a war with uh, Iran during the Bush administration. The Iranians and Syrians are mostly Shia controlled, with a large portion of Sunni in their borders. Now. The things that I haven't heard talked about so much are the fact that Iran and Syria are terrified of ISIS simply because they'd never be able to control an uprising of Sunni militant terrorists within their borders. On top of that, I also haven't heard anybody mentioning the possibility of places like Pakistan and Egypt uh, adding to the ISIS role numbers. Because Pakistan and Egypt are both places with economic depression filled with Sunnis that pretty much are stones throw away from Iran. When you learn more about world, hi world history and when you learn more about geography, one thing you'll understand is that Iran is sandwiched between Afghanistan and Iraq, as you can see in this picture. This is all land with nothing but desert and roads, and these people can easily move back and forth between these countries because there's really no border checkpoints, especially border checkpoints that can't be killed off by a bunch of terrorists moving back and forth. So I have to wonder how effective can a strategy be if you're fighting an enemy that is constantly reproducing, is constantly gaining ground, and is virtually everywhere. It, it would be like fighting roaches that live 
in different points in the house without fumigating. How exactly do you do it? I really believe what we need to consider is that, uh, because the, the simple fact of the matter is, we've been giving weapons to these uh, Shia forces in Iraq, and we've been, we've been giving weapons to the Peshmerga, the Kurds, we've been giving weapons to these people, but some of them can't use the weapons because they don't speak English, or because uh, the weapons are far too sophisticated. I mean, the, you, you, you try handing somebody a, uh, a rocket launcher that's not as simple as an RPG-7, and explaining to them how to use, uh, uh, say, how, how to use a tow missile against a tank. It's not that easy, especially if they don't, if they don't speak English. But, um, you know, I hope the government has a plan. I don't believe the government has a plan. And I think that 20, 30 years from now, we'll be looking at the exact same shit. And then there's that entire Ukraine-Russia situation, which still hasn't been finalized. Russia has a border with Ukraine, so naturally whatever is going to happen is far out of the hands of America to deal with in this situation. Russia arms Iran, who right now wants America's help in fighting ISIS. And then Russia has its own problems with the Chechens and with terrorist groups such as those who uh, took over the Beslan school many years ago and uh, resulted in the deaths, the murders of many children and uh, staff of the school at Beslan. And you have to wonder, this entire region, uh, many, many thousands and thousands and thousands of square miles of, of land, you have to wonder what is this region going to look like in the future. Russia can't fight ISIS on its own. Iran and Syria can't fight ISIS. I, uh, Pakistan and Egypt can only add to it. Turkey is going to end up having a problem with it. Afghanistan will too. Possibly even Kazakhstan. Where does it end? ISIS is executing any white national that they can get their hands on, whether they're from France or Germany or America, and using beheadings as a way to try to convince the, uh, what are they called, the, the nations to not help the Kurds, Peshmerga, or to help the uh, forces who are up against them, the Shia forces. But um, the simple fact is, it's videos like this that actually make the public more war hawkish. So it actually has the opposite intent, and you have to wonder why it is that these people are picking a fight with uh, countries that have excellent air forces and don't have to commit drown ground troops and can simply bomb them from the sky. You have to wonder why are Somebody they doing it. please explain to me, where are they getting all of these orange prison-issued jumpsuits from? Is there, like, a sale on orange prison issue jumpsuits in the middle of the uh, town fairs or something? I don't understand. And also, where are these people getting HD camcorders from to record their beheading videos in 1080p, 60 frames a second? Because their videos are starting to look more sophisticated than um, the ones that I'm shooting off the Sony HXR NX5U. This is just getting out of hand.